I was browsing the web and I was really inspired by this design, so I created this. I deleted the cube and imported the FBX file. I found the reference from CD Trader. I've attached the reference in the description below. Locate where you saved the model. Once I imported the file, I went into the camera view and positioned the camera. Hold tilde key, view camera. Click on view and make sure camera to view is checked so that you can lock onto the camera. I selected the object and rotated it towards the side. I wanted it to be similar to the reference. Then I selected the light and deleted it from the scene. After that, I wanted to apply some textures onto the model, so I went to shading. With the object selected, I clicked on new. I went to roughness and changed that to zero. I moved the material output towards the right. Shift A and add in a mix shader. Link the mix shader together, relink the top shader to the bottom shader. Shift A and add in a emission. The emission is used to give the object light. Connect the emission to the shader. I'm going to change the color to blue. Change the hue to 0 0.605. Change the saturation to 0 0.974. Click on the render view in the top right corner. So right now it just looks like a silhouette. I'm going to increase the emission strength to 3.2. Go to render properties, make sure EV selected and click on bloom to get a glow effect. Shift A and add in a color ramp then connect the color to the factor. I need to apply two textures on top of the object. So I'm going to add a mix. Change float to color and then link it to the color ramp. I'm going to add in a texture now, shift A and add a wave texture. And then link that to A. You can play around with the scale but I left it at 13.4. Change the distortion to 0 0.6, detail to 15. The values don't need to be the same. You can just play around to see what you like. If you want the same values, you can just copy them. To avoid the texture from stretching, we need to apply a mapping shader and a texture coordinate. With the wave texture selected, Hold Ctrl T. If that didn't work, go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, and make sure Node Wrangler is checked. Add in the second texture, Shift A, add a Borrow No texture. Link the color to B. So change 3D to 4D so that the texture could be animated. Change F1 to F2. Euclidean to Minkowski. I'm going to change the W value to minus 20, the scale to minus 3.4. I'm going to zoom out, select everything from the mix shader onwards. Shift A and add a brick texture. I'm using a brick texture to create glitching lines on top of the model. Go to row height and change that to 0 0.65. I'm going to change the brick width to 2.3. The bias to minus 1. Change motor smooth to 0. Change the motor size to 0 0.125. Then I'm going to change the scale to 59. Actually, I'm going to go back and change the scale to 40. Then I'm going to create another window. Hover around the corner of the window and then drag up. And then we're going to add a timeline so that we can animate the textures we've applied on top of the object. 
I'm going to zoom in into the wave texture and I'm going to go to the timeline and change that to 120. Make sure you're on frame one on the timeline. Go to phase offset, right click, insert keyframe, and then go to the last keyframe and go to phase offset and then change the values. So I'm going to change it to 68, right click, insert keyframe, then go to Rhino texture. Make sure you go to the first frame. Go to W, right click, insert keyframe, go to the last frame, and then change the values. So I'm going to change it to 1.8, right click, insert keyframe. Go to frame one, and then go to scale, right click, insert keyframe. Go to the last frame, and then change the scale value. I'm going to change it to 18. Right click, insert keyframe. Then I'm going to go to the brick texture. Go to the first frame, insert keyframe. Go to the last frame and then change the scale value. I'm going to change it to 67. Right click, insert keyframe. Press play on the timeline. And as you can see, the textures are moving. The animation starts to slow down towards the end. So we're going to go to editor type, graph editor. Click on one of the texture nodes we animated. So for example, go to Rhino texture. Press A to select everything on the graph editor. Go to key, interpolation mode, linear. Then click on wave texture, repeat the same action. Click on the brook texture and do the same thing. Then go back to timeline and play the animation just to see how it looks. I'm gonna go back to layout mode. I need to render out the entire animation so that I can import it into After Effects. Click on Render Preview, go to Render Properties, make sure EV selected. To remove the background, go to Film and click on Transparent. Go to Output Properties to export the animation. You can see here the frames, choose the folder you want to save it in. You can change the file format. After everything's set up, go to Render and then choose render animation now that we're in after effects we need to import the animation so go to file import file click on the first frame make sure png sequence is checked open and then drag that into the composition next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to apply an effect called signal and an effect called glitch you have to buy these plugins, but I definitely do recommend it if you want to create a realistic glitch effect. I've attached the link in the description below. So as you can see, you get like a very old school feel from it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add another signal effect to make it look even older. I'm going to leave all of the default settings. I'm also going to add in a JPEG glitch. So I'm going to drag this to the top. Go to compression ratio and change that to 40. And as you can see, the quality starts to decrease, which is what we want to do to make the glitch effect look realistic. This is the final design. I'm going to go ahead and export it. Go to file, export, add to render key. Click on the folder where you want to save it. and then click render. And this is the final outcome. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.